Hey guys, let's do Doppler navigation in the hip. So the Doppler nav unit is installed in the back of the tail there, and it's constantly pulsing the ground and getting returns back which tell it which direction it's traveling, how fast it's moving, and how far off course you might be. So the Doppler nav system can be used to precisely navigate to a known destination where you know how far you need to travel and in what direction. It can also be used for dead reckoning where the only thing you know is where you are now and you want to figure out what's around you and what's in some other direction. And it can be used to measure how far you've traveled in some direction and bring you back to your starting point. So let's have a look at the F-10 map and we're gonna talk about where we are and where we're going for today's flight. So we are down at the bottom left and we're headed up to the top right. It's a distance of nine nautical miles on a heading of 055. Now the first thing to note is that the hip is in metric, so nine nautical miles won't do us any good. If we entered in that, we would get slightly over halfway and then wonder why we haven't found our airfield yet. So converting knots to kilometers, one nautical mile is about 1.85 kilometers. So it's not quite double. And nine nautical miles is about 16.7 kilometers. So that's what we're going to try to enter into our Doppler nav system in the hip is a heading of 055 for 16.7. All right, so in the cockpit of the helicopter, we don't actually have any controls or gauges or indicators or anything for the Doppler system from the pilot commander's seat on the left. Instead, that's all done by this guy over here, the pilot navigator. And we can hit his seat by pressing 2 on the keyboard. So he's got a couple of gauges down here that we care a lot about, but we can barely see them right now, so let's turn on some lights first of all. So we have lights up here, we have our dome light. I'm going to set that to white, brighten up the cockpit a little bit. Above that we have two dials for the red backlights, turn them all the way up. Then we look back down, and now we can see things a little better, but the two gauges we care about still aren't lit up. So let's go and turn them on. They have their own switch for backlights, and that's just up here at the 5.5V light Doppler sys. Turn that on. Now they still don't have lights, and that's because they also have their own brightness dial, which is behind our head. That's this white one here, down to the right of the med kit. Turn that one all the way up. All right, so now if we look back down here, we've got, we've got power, we've got lights, the system is on, but there's two more things we need to check, and that's on the left, the drift angle steam gauge here. At the bottom of it, you've got two knobs. One of them switches between land and sea. The Doppler works a little bit differently. The signal it gets back from the land is stronger than the one it gets back from the sea where the water partially absorbs it. And it's going to read incorrectly. So you've got to toggle this from flying over water and leave it here from flying over land. And then on this side you have a switch that switches between test and operate. So if we switch it to test, we'll get 306 on the ground speed indicator, kilometers per hour. And it should tell us here about 16 degrees of drift to the right. Now if we flip this back to operate, it's going to stay that way, and the easiest way to get it back to normal is just the power cycle. So if we just turn off the Doppler system, back on, and there we go, it'll reset back to normal. Let's stop here. Alright, so we've got three things that we can enter. One is the drift angle, which we really want to just zero out before we start any new flight. So if we've been on another flight, we drifted off course a little bit, we just want to return this to zero. And we can do that by holding either left or right. So if we've drifted one kilometer to the left, we can reset this by holding the right button to bring it back to zero, similarly to the other direction. But that's where we want it for now is right at zero. The flight path kilometer, this is our distance to our destination, which in our case is about 16.7 kilometers. Now this is always going to tick up in the forward direction as you fly. It's going to go this direction like this. So you can leave it at zero and then wait till it reaches 16.7 if that's what you want to do, but that relies on you remembering how far you intended to fly. My preference is to hold the aft button and cycle it backwards the distance that I want to go. So 16, 3, 4, 6, 7. 
right about there. Give or take. And then this will tick forward, and I know that once it hits zero, I've reached my destination. I've flown as far as I intended to. Now you may want to set it forward. We'll talk about this later when we reach our destination. But one thing you might want to do is if you're going to set uh, a certain heading, and you're going to fly there, and then you're going to fly back, you can leave the same heading and just fly the opposite direction, and it'll count backwards. So it will actually count up if you're flying the right direction, and backwards it'll count down if you're flying in the other direction, so it is smart enough to know that. Now the map angle, the last one, this is our heading, so we're entering 055. Now you can go backwards around the circle if you want to, or forward, depending on which is closer. It's a little bit less convenient than something like the Hornet or, um, or the Harrier, where you could just punch in 055 and hit enter, and here you have to roll the drum all the way around to the number you want get it just right. There we go, 055. Five, five. And then finally at the bottom there's the off and on. We need to make sure we hit on and we get this enable light, otherwise the system does us no good. So now as we fly, we're going to take a heading of 055 five, and what's going to happen is this drift angle indicator, this drift angle at the top here is going to tick up or down, uh, right or left, to tell us how far off course we are. So if we start drifting off course to the left, it'll start doing this. If we start drifting off course to the right, it'll start doing this. And it's our job to fly in such a way that this stays close to zero. So we'll keep an eye on it, make course corrections as needed, and keep this zeroed out as best we can. Otherwise, we're going to fly the right number, the right number of kilometers, but we're not going to find our destination because we've drifted off course. To the left of that is a drift angle indicator the steam gauge or the needle there, it says drift angle behind it. This is different from the drift angle kilometers readout on the Doppler nav input panel there. This will tell you how, which direction you are drifting in relation to the direction your nose is pointed, not in relation to the selected course that you put in to so that 055 map angle. So for example, if I were to fly, if I were just to uh, translate left, it will give me a drift angle to the left, but I could be drifting on a course of 055 and not actually be off course at all. And we'll show you that in the air, it'll make more sense then, but the drift angle gauge is relative to which way the helicopter is pointing. The drift angle kilometer readout is relative to the map angle that I've set. Clear as mud? Awesome. So then the last thing is we want to set our course selector here little knob to the left to 0, 055. Five. And then we just have to keep our heading needle here centered between these two lines. Keep an eye on our drift angle here. And we don't actually care as much about our drift angle gauge to the left of it, except for coordinated flight. All right, so we're going to lift up and then we're going to turn right. And we're going to head off that way to our airfield. I don't want to climb probably a little more, but you can see we're basically following our desired course. And then if we look at our drift indicator, we've drifted slightly to the left and we're drifting more in that direction, but not very quickly. So that we know that at some point as we fly, we'll need to come right just a little bit. And we can also see here that we are drifting to the left. So when you're in forward level coordinated flight, these two things should basically tell you the same thing, that you are drifting off course in one particular direction. But they aren't, keep in mind, they aren't actually tied to that. So now if I were to turn, My turn is not coordinated, and if I pause it right here, you can see that I'm drifting to the right even though I'm turning left. And this drift angle here is gonna to continue to go to the left as I get off course further and further. So these two are not related. So this is telling me, the drift angle here is telling me more which way I'm slipping or skidding. In this case, I'm skidding to the outside of the turn, and so I'm getting this drift angle to the right. But I'm off course to the left by the tune of about half a kilometer so far. You can also see that in the flight path KM in the middle, 
that I'm down to about 11 kilometers remaining to go, and I still have my map angle selected. So if I now fly on this heading for a little bit, I can reduce and eliminate this drift angle so the helicopter is flying true in the direction it's pointing it's not sliding uh, either direction but i'm also a full kilometer off course to the left with 11 kilometers to go so this tells me i need to come right and i need to get myself a kilometer off that way to get back onto course so now i'm going to come back this way Now if I go back to my intended heading here of 055, I'm already about a kilometer off course to the left, so even if I resume this heading now, I'm still a kilometer off course. And that's not going to change even if I am on the right heading and I'm not drifting anymore. I'm still going to show up with my destination a kilometer off my right side. So I still need to come right. Until my drift angle, which is down there, comes back to zero. So if I zoom in here, so now my drift angle is almost back to zero, and if I were to take a heading of 055 now, I'd be in the right place. But I'm not on that heading, so what's going to happen is I'm going to go right past that line from where I came from to where I'm going. If we look at the F10 map. So I'm going to be crossing over the line here to the right side now to drift off course to the right. There we go, so now we're drifting off course to the right and it's going to start ticking up again with the direction of right. So I know I need to come left. The whole idea here is if you get pushed off course by either bad steering or by tail rotor drift or by wind or whatever else, weather, anything, if it gets in the way and you end up off course, the Doppler Nav system should tell you how far off course you are and help you correct for that. So I know I need to come back to the left now. And I know that I also have, if I pause here, Look, I have four kilometers left to my destination, and I'm slightly right, but that's okay. So I should be able to see where I'm going by now or very soon. And I'm only a few kilometers away, and I'm not drifting off course by too much. Three kilometers, and I'm centered, so now I'm going to resume my course of 055. And sure enough, there is the airfield right in front of me. So I'm on course. I've drifted slightly to the left. But I had set myself in the corner there of the runway. And now I can just bring myself down in for a landing. Okay, so we're on the ground at our destination. And if we wanted to navigate our way back now, we have a couple of different ways that we can do that. We look down here again. I've reset the drift angle back to zero. I've reset the flight path this time uh, to 16.7, roughly, but this time to forward. And I've left the map angle at 055. So what I could do is I could reset it back to aft, 16.7 um, kilometers and set the map angle to the reciprocal heading of about 235. But I wanted to show you that this can count backwards. If you just leave the map angle alone at 055 and then fly the reciprocal heading, 235, it will tick down from that 16.7 kilometers forward down to zero. So if we undo and pause the head tracking and we set our reciprocal heading, about 235, 
there. And then we fly that heading. This should tick down, even though our desired map angle is set to 055. So it's smart enough to know which way we're going and to count this up or down, depending on... If we fly this heading now, we can watch our drift angle down at the bottom, and our flight path distance is now ticking down. Let's not crash into any trees while we're doing that. But we can watch this tick down, 15, 14, slowly. Drift angle is good, staying at zero, even though we are not flying true to our direction we're pointing in. You can see our slip balls off to the left, so we could correct that for a more fuel efficient aerodynamic flight, but we are on the right heading and we're not drifting even though we've got a drift angle because we're pointed, our nose is pointed to the right and we're drifting a bit to the left. Kind of see it here. This is really nice especially for some of the longer trips. If you do the spring tension campaign in the hip, the first couple of missions are basically fan flights where you're just going to fly a great big triangle around the Java area. And having the Doppler nav system and knowing how to use it is going to make a big difference. Because you're going to be sent, you know, 50, 60, 80 kilometers, I think, in one direction. And just to fly straight that way with nothing else you need to do. So having the Doppler nav will help you get there. It will get you there with accuracy. And all you need to do is make sure you set it up ahead of time. Now something to note... If you look at my desired heading, 235 versus where I'm really pointing now, I'm way off course to my left. But if I look down at the Doppler panel, I'm drifting way off to the right. And that's because I've left the map angle, the desired heading of Doppler, at 055, and I'm flying the reciprocal heading. So if you think about which direction I am, if I pause it here, look at the F10 map, if you think about which direction off that line I am coming from my original location where I spawned, I'm way off to the right of that line. So you have to, if you're going to do this and you're going to fly a reciprocal heading to what you've set in here, you have to keep in mind that your drift angle is now inverted. So when it says you're off four kilometers to the right, don't keep going to the left because you're actually off four kilometers to the left and you need to come to the right. If we unpause and we come back this way. Now we can reduce that number, bring it back to zero, and hopefully reach our destination in time, or get lined up before we run out of distance to travel, which is currently four and a half kilometers remaining. All right, so there's our airfield. You can see the blue smoke. You can also see our desired course is pointing basically right at it. And our actual uh, heading is way off because we're trying to reduce that drift angle. We were way off course. But this shows you that the Doppler will get you where you want to go, regardless of which way you actually ended up flying as long as you listen to it. So that's pretty much it. We've navigated away. We've navigated home, showing you the different inputs, how to turn the system on, the backlights, the difference between the drift angle gauge and the drift angle kilometers readout. We've shown you um, how to set all of that, how it works differently depending on which way you're going. And that's more or less it. This is perfect for any of those situations where you know your heading and your distance to your destination. You can also use it if you don't know and you just want to, you know where you are, you can use it for a bit of dead reckoning is you can set it at zero where you are now, pick a direction you want to fly in, and then measure how far you've gone and measure your way back. So it'll also help you in those situations. So that's pretty much it for Doppler Nav. I hope that made sense. If I missed something or got something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys for the next video.